20 heartbroken families lost a child in the Sandy Hook school shooting. I know how much it hurts. My nine-year-old daughter was murdered in the Tucson shooting. I have one question for our political leaders. When will you find the courage to stand up to the gun lobby? Whose child has to die next? To every mother, we cannot wait. We have to demand a plan. Go to demandaplan.org and add your name. Mayors Against Illegal Guns Action Fund is responsible for the content of this advertising. That television ad aired for the first time today in Tucson, Arizona at 1010 a.m. to mark to the minute the second anniversary of the gun massacre that left six people dead and 12 people wounded, including former Congresswoman Gabby Giffords. Gabby Giffords, along with her husband Mark Kelly, launched the Americans for Responsible Solutions Political Action Committee today to counter the influence of murder weapon lobbyists like the National Rifle Association. In a USA Today op-ed, they wrote, in response to a horrific series of shootings that has shown ter sown terror in our communities, victimized tens of thousands of Americans and left one of its own bleeding and near death in, tu in a Tucson parking lot, Congress has done something quite extraordinary, nothing at all. How did we get to the point where 85% of the children in the world that are killed with guns are killed in the, in the United States? That is a sobering statistic. So that's what changed for you? Yes. You told me before when I said, are you angry? You said no. It's life. Do you still feel that way? Mm, no. Do you get angry yes, sometimes? Yes, yes, yes. Vice President Joe Biden will be sending his recommendations for gun safety reform to the president within the next three weeks. The vice president will meet with victims groups and gun safety organizations tomorrow at the White House. Then on Thursday, he will meet with gun advocates, including a representative from the NRA. Joining me now is MSNBC's Joy Reid and Patricia Maish, who helped stop the Tucson shooter by wrestling away a magazine of bullets before he could reload. Uh, Patricia, I, I want to start with you tonight. Uh, w one thing that, that the NRA talks about is you can't stop all of these killings. We know that we can't stop all of them. For me, the question is, how easy do we want to make it for them? And one of those questions is, how big are those magazines that we want our mass shooters to have access to? And, and as you know from your own personal experience, the only reason that shooting stopped was because he had to reload. That's right. Um, there's absolutely no reason for the general population to have that kind of fire capacity or that type of gun, um, the, high, the assault weapons. There's no reason for that. Now, our shooter had a Glock, so that doesn't fall into that category, I don't believe. But the high-capacity magazines, if he had only had 10 bullets in that first magazine, there probably would not be as many people injured or dead. Yeah, Patricia, I've said that I, I blame the shooter for those first 10, but uh, I blame the laws for what happened after that. Uh, Joy Reid, um, the, the momentum is, is building in, in the public discussion about this, and I, I want to play, I think, something that's kind of extraordinary. Is General McChrystal this morning on Morning Joe talking about this? I spent a career carrying uh, typically either an M16 and then later an M4 carbine, and an M4 carbine fires a 223 caliber round, which is 5.56 millimeter, at about 3,000 feet per second. When it hits a human body, the effects are devastating. It's designed to do that. I personally don't think there's any need for that kind of weaponry on the streets, and particularly in, around the schools in America. I think serious action is necessary. Sometimes we talk about very... Uh, limited actions on the edges, and I just don't think done? that's enough. I think we'll find out. There's a former general. He knows those weapons were designed for his use, not for street use. Yeah, and I think that's really important. I mean, we've heard a lot of people say that it's important for gun owners to get involved in the debate, but I think it's even more important to hear from people like Stanley McChrystal. Look, on the way over here, I, I called my brother, who trained at Fort Dix for the Army National Guard, and we talked about this. I mean, when the Army went to the AR-15 type of firepower from the M-16, the upgrade was the, the sort of Bushmaster AR-15 because it's lighter weight and it gives you the capacity 
to essentially lay down what you could consider cover fire. The idea that you can fire so many bullets that the, uh, the enemy, right, cannot get the opportunity to advance. These are weapons of war. They're military weapons. And we've heard people who have military service say this. These are the kinds of weapons our troops need to survive a war zone. There is really no credible explanation I've ever heard as to why ordinary people need them. These guns were designed to kill people. That's what they're for. Patricia, have, have you had any uh, conversations with, with uh, gun enthusiasts who have told you, this is why I need a high-capacity magazine for, for my ammunition? The only thing they've told me, and I have had conversations, is that I deserve to have them, I can have them, it's legal, I want them, I can afford them. Do they tell you of any suffering they endured during the years when they were illegal? Uh, not one word. And I did <laughs> challenge I did challenge a couple of people that have said they could have taken down our shooter, and I challenged them with saying, I'll buy you um, a reality or a fantasy adventure at one of the villages where the um, good guys pop out and the bad guys pop out, and if you can take every one of the bad guys down and not hit any of the good guys, I'll pay for your adventure. If you don't perform perfectly, then you have to give me three times that what I paid for my cause, and I've not had anyone take me up on that offer yet. And, and Joy, uh, well-trained police officers cannot get those uh, tests exactly right, and they are given to police officers to, officers to humble them on the use of their firearms, to be more careful with them. Yeah, absolutely. There was an armed guard at Columbine, right? When somebody is firing 100 rounds at you, when do you have the opportunity to take them out? At what point, with those hundred round volleys flying at you? We have a human example right here on the show tonight of somebody who was able to intervene only because the guy had to stop shooting. Pat Mache, thank you for your heroism and thanks for joining us tonight with Joy Reid. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. Coming up, the Jersey Boys, Chris Christie and Jon Stewart, are teaming up to attack House Republicans. And in the rewrite, Massachusetts is going to get another appointed senator when John Kerry becomes Secretary of State. Wouldn't it be nice? Wouldn't it make a lot of sense if that appointed senator who will hold office temporarily until a special election is held actually has some Washington legislative experience like Barney Frank or or maybe even better, some Senate legislative experience like maybe, I don't know, you know, me?